What's up guys, Adrian Jensen, real name, no gimmicks, back for ProductionCrate.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make this sweet drone strike looking effect. First of all, if you have not seen the previous compositing tutorial about using these elements, I recommend watching that first. That is on the Production Crate website and YouTube channel, of course. I will be taking a few notes from it in this tutorial, as a matter of fact. The first of which is a suggestion to take to Flickr.com in order to find some uh, stock photos, but I actually use it to find a um, stock video to use as my background. As you can see, there's this video here shot by Henry McCorkle, who has released it into the public domain for us. I'm actually using this first shot from it. In order to prepare it for the effect, all I've done is just zoomed in on it a little bit. So I have that loaded in After Effects already, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to track the camera, which is very easy. We just hit this track camera button, and this is a very straightforward shot, so I'm not gonna mess with any of these controls. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. I'm gonna go watch some Netflix or something. All right, we're back through the power of editing. The tracking is done. Um, I didn't really watch anything on Netflix like I thought I was going to. The problem is there's there's just too many choices and they all sound great, but none of them sound right for me, like right now. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, so what we have now are all these cool two dimensional points, but they represent um, three dimensional points. And we can use them to create a 3D camera and some points to use as reference. And as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I want to have some bad guys or good guys, depending on what type of guy I am, on top of this roof. So I'm gonna add a solid and a camera right here. So this solid is going to track that position. So whatever we attach to that is gonna look like it's on this roof. And our camera is just that, it's a camera. I'm also going to make a new solid right on the front of this building as well, just so I have that spot saved up for later. So let's disable this camera tracker so we're not gonna be uh, calculating it for the rest of our lives. And what we need to do now is ignore those solids we just made and we're gonna treat this footage before we go any further. So ultimately what I'm gonna want is to give the impression that we're looking through some kind of thermal camera or you know not a regular camera. I don't know exactly what kind of high-tech camera it needs to be. Um, so of course, let's duplicate the footage so we're, we're not destroying our only copy of it. First, I'm going to tint it, of course. But I think actually that this is going to look better, more like a, a thermal camera or something, if we actually invert it. So that's what I'm going to do. And what we have now is too bright, but um, here, let's add a levels first. Bring it back down to a manageable, you know, level. I don't actually want any white. I don't want it to be that bright. So I'm going to first darken down this whole thing. Not too dark either, but I'm going to bring down the output white as well. So it only kind of turns gray. Um, so this way it's like there's, there's heat coming from inside the buildings. These cars um, that once were casting shadows on the road are now kind of generating heat as they drive. So I think that that makes a little bit of sense but you know what doesn't make sense is the sky is now completely black and i don't think it should be that way so actually we're going to fix that as well we're going to make another copy of this just duplicate this copy that we've already made hit Control d to do that and on this copy we're gonna crush the levels even further so that the sky turns black but we want the rest of it to be white let's reset our levels actually make that easier so make our sky black and the rest of it as white as we can. If it's not perfect, it's not perfect. That's, that's fine, I don't care. And let's add a fast blur to it as well. Just a, a little bit so it's not gonna be harsh. And now let's duplicate our footage that we have on the bottom, which is our untreated version. Let's duplicate that. We should name these layers. So this, this layer we just made, we're gonna name Matt. Our fresh duplicate we'll call Sky. Bring that below the Matt. And we can use our mat as a Luma inverted mat. So that's, this way, the uh, black in that image is going to control the alpha of this other image, right? So now we have our sky back. Of course, we need to give it a tint. 
to make it black and white and then just turn on our other footage that we treated and and there we go it might be a little bright though so actually we can easily fix that by just turning down the opacity of it we don't need to add another levels or anything like that so there we go that's our our thermal effect done so we can actually just highlight that matte the sky and our original footage there and just go ahead and pre-compose them All right now those are nice and pre-composed so let's start adding some stuff I'm gonna turn my solids back on and let's open up the production crate website and we're gonna go into this uh, extra SWAT and henchmen section we've got all these cool henchmen the ones I want are this one here which is the man down side angle and this one here which is the man down front angle so let's download those and import those into the project all right so let's pull in the front angle one to start with and as you can see the scale of it is overkill for this scene but first what we want to do is move the anchor point down to his feet because we want the feet basically to be making contact with this plane eventually so that'll just make that easier to set up and now we're going to move it in time so that he falls down when the explosion happens and i've already decided that i'm going to have the explosion happen at three seconds so let's go to three seconds and then just move this thing so that he starts to fall at about three seconds i know with this background it's a little visually confusing work with me here so there we go that's good so let's right click it and hit time enable time remapping and the reason we're doing that is because we need to extend this bit out a little bit so he doesn't just pop on because he's the clip isn't quite long enough for what we're trying to do so that's good we can go ahead and make that a 3d layer now and if we hit shift and parent it to our purple solid now he's going to be right there on the roof so we just need to rotate it the right way and scale it to the right scale which is just anyone's guess really that's about right kind of moving more into position we want and let's set a keyframe for the position and we're going to move forward to where he's finished falling there we go he hits the ground about here so on this frame we'll move him to a different position so this way it looks like he's being thrown by the force of the explosion all right, there we go. With the difference in quality between the footage and the background, it looks a little bit silly, but we're gonna make this work eventually. Don't even worry too much about it. So I'm actually just gonna duplicate him. Just make another one, maybe flip it horizontal so it's not exactly the same. Okay, and we'll do the same thing with the uh, side angle clips. Okay, there we go. We've got three guys reacting to the explosion. What I wanna do now is just add a levels effect to these guys and just pump it up so that they're significantly brighter than the background since they're supposed to stand out there are targets we don't want to just make them totally white but we want them to be brighter than the rest we need to add a tint to those as well okay let's duplicate those effects to the other guys sweet so how about now we actually drop in an explosion so on the production create website we have this section for fire and explosions the one i would like to use is this one here slow-mo explosion one this is really nice but there's a lot of really nice explosions in this site this is the one that i'm going to pick but i recommend that you have a browse around just look at everything that production create has to offer it's really nice also so let's bring that explosion in and we need to make it a 3d layer and we're gonna shift parent it to this uh, purple solid. Or we're gonna actually shift parent it to this green solid that we made earlier. Hold down shift to parent it to that. So now it's in line with the plane of this building. So we wanna move it up, bring up our title action safe because when we eventually add a like an aimer in the middle, it's gonna show that we're aiming for directly in the center of the screen. So we want this explosion to be basically emitting from the center of the screen. So there we go, that looks good. I am gonna cut off the first few frames so it's a little more violent and punchy. And add a tint effect to this. Oh, we don't want it quite so bright. So let's bring that white point down. We wanna make sure that the smoke is not too dark also because it doesn't make sense that the smoke is going to be colder than like these walls here, right? The smoke is still gonna be hot, just not as hot as the fire. So punch that up too. Now let's just add a mask to kind of cut off where it would be intersecting with this wall. So you invert that mask, probably need to feather it out a little bit. Let's also add like a super bright flash at this point too. So 
Get a new solid, make it kind of this white color. Not completely white though. We want it, we don't want anything to be that bright. Let's add a circle mask to it and just kind of feather that way out. And we need to change the transfer mode of it to maybe a lighten, or we actually could do add, why not? Over a few frames, we're just gonna fade that out. So set a keyframe for the opacity, down maybe three or four frames and just fade away. I'm also gonna duplicate that layer and just delete the mask on this one, but change the starting opacity of it to not be quite so bright. So now the whole place is lit up, but the center is lit up the most. All right, sweet snow. Next I wanna add kind of some falling debris coming from this. So we can do that with production crate as well. Hit up the dirt and debris section. Let's see what we got. Here we go, this uh, 2K debris falling four is pretty nice. Let's download that. Might wanna use this side impact as well. All right, I'll start with the side impact one. I'll bring that in and drop it under our explosion, but kind of above our henchman. We need to make that into a 3D layer, of course. We can shift parent it to just one of these henchmen, which will drop into the right spot, but then unparent it so that it's not gonna move when they move. So now I just wanna put it into position on top of this roof. All right, that's nice, but maybe I wanna darken it down a little bit. I do that with a curves effect, why not? Okay, that's very easy. And now we just wanna drop in the falling debris as well, which we also need to put below the explosion, make it a 3D layer. We can shift parent it to the explosion since it needs to be in the same spot. Scale it down and move it down. I think I might incorporate a few copies of it as well. All right, that's looking pretty good. I wanna put an adjustment layer on top of this whole thing. We'll name it lens distortion. And we're just gonna simulate kind of a fisheye look by adding the bulge effect and just scale this up real big. But turn the amount down real low, like 0.3. Doesn't need to be that huge. And then also we're gonna go ahead and add a preset that comes shipped with After Effects called Bad TV Week. And we'll drop that on one of the effects that's included in it is wave warp, and that is not helping us. So we'll delete that, but our color balance is still nice. Our noise definitely helps the effect, and uh, the Venetian blinds look great. I also want to add a box blur effect. It doesn't need to be crazy. I'm just going to put it up to two, but I actually want to put it below most of this other stuff. Let's see, now all of a sudden our all of our elements that were looking too sharp before are now composited decently well. Um, so next, just to add a little bit of visual interest to this whole thing, let's go back to the website and come to the sci-fi section. And there's all these different targeting elements in here. Honestly, just, just pick the one you like the best. Any of them will work. Ooh, this one, this one, this one, this one, number 10. And we just wanna kinda drop that in. See how it kinda animates on? Just make sure that it's done animating on before we hit three seconds. I think I might scale it down just a little bit. Okay, that's good. And then we also have all these crazy hologram effects. I'm gonna take two of them. I'm gonna take HUD Greeble number three, and I'm gonna take the map. And honestly, I just want to drag and drop those in as you can see, our composition is longer than these pieces of footage, but all of the holograms are loopable. So if we just hit time, enable time remapping, and then hold down alt and click the stopwatch, and type like this, loop, all lowercase, without, with a capital O, and then open parentheses and close parentheses. And then if we pull out the end, that'll just make it loop forever. We're also gonna wanna tint that Maybe give it like a screen transfer mode. And then I'm just gonna scale it down and put it in the corner and do the same with the map. So here's what our shot is looking like thus far. I figure we should take a look at some coloring options now. So my original intention was to use the color vibrance effect from Video Copilot like I always do. So we can just drag that on and I was gonna kind of just leave it at its, at its default. So now we have this kind of night vision type look here. 
So yeah, that looks pretty awesome. That looks nice and green. This is my original intention when I started filming this tutorial. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. Look at these guys. Like, hey, look at us. We're bad guys and we're going to do bad things. Oh, oh no, now we're now we're sleeping. I really like how the uh, how the colors change when it blows out here. That looks good to me. But obviously we could make that a different color as well. It's looking nice and red. Um, or we could uh, just delete that and do something like this. We could put on Colorama, which ships with After Effects. And this will give us more of a, uh, like a heat vision thermal look. However, I think I might want to do an invert before. In, drop in an invert before the Colorama. And there, now we have it. You know, it's looking nice and purple, except for these dudes are all green and stuff. So this looks pretty cool. It makes our our bad guys stand out a lot more. And I really think that this widget here looks cool. The noise that we added with that uh, bad TV preset really breaks this color up. Uh, it looks it looks ugly, but it's supposed to look ugly. Like that's the point. So that's okay. And then the the flash here is just like a wild explosion of color. If you twirl down the modify section in Colorama, um, there's all these different options, which I don't really fully understand what they are for, but they'll all add like different different looks that could look pretty cool. So here we have this really like post-apocalyptic red color. Everything turns white and blue. Look at this frame. Look at this. Look at these colors. That looks nice. We could change that to green. Now it's all green with our guys being purple. If we turn the invert back on, now it's all purple with our guys being green. That looks great as well. Everything of interest is green and everything that's not of interest is purple. That's cool. Here's some cool colors as well. Oh, here we go. This is, this is kind of, I can see this working. So we, on Colorama, we've just got it set to modify the blue channel. And so now our, our guys are here in white against this really ugly green gold color. Yeah, that looks good. So that'll bring me to the end of the tutorial. That's all I got for now. I hope you enjoyed it. And I also hope that you will check out the website in the future so you can download a lot of these cool assets. Um, many of them are free. You can also, of course, subscribe on YouTube or you can follow us on Facebook or on Instagram. You can also talk to me on Twitter if you want. If you have any questions, I'll answer them. If you have any suggestions, I'll do your work for you. And uh, that's going to be it for now. So see you later, dudes.